Okay, I uh, put this one in the, uh, the, the pile. Uh, subscribe to Van Wives. Van Wives, these two chicks, and they have together bought a... Uh, they, okay, they drive vans, but they bought this cabin uh, in Nova Scotia, which is uh, in eastern Canada. I don't know. Um, not that... I guess Nova Scotia is not all that far from New Brunswick. It's not... You know, it's, it's probably a couple-hour drive, but... Uh, you know, they're, they're down the road from Slim Potato Head. Yeah, anyway. They're, move, they're moving into the woods alone together. And uh, I don't know. This is nice. This is very nice. Anyway, this is them exploring their brand new cabin there in the beautiful backwoods of Nova Scotia. On the can, what is it? The Canadian Atlantic there. Anyway, we've been talking more about Canadians that we want to see them in eastern Canada. We're tired of seeing all these Canadians out there in British Columbia and Alberta and stuff, which is just darn beautiful too, but not as gorgeously green uh, as... Um, Nova Scotia. So they're busy cleaning the clearing the land, and they've got a world of uh, upgrades for this little cabin there in uh, Nova Scotia. So the Van Wives, the Van Wives channel there. Here, yeah, so um, we're in there in the mix. Okay, uh, there they are driving around the world. New video every Sunday. Uh, this was down in Mexico. They've been all around, the, all over the place. Anyway, so they are now in Canada. And uh, settling down in a <laughs> settling down in a cabin. So anyway, all right, some great scenery there. Obviously, beautiful scenery there in uh, Eastern Canada. Check them out, the Van Wy. Hey, we got some big news here. Matt's RV reviews there. Uh, that's Matt on the right there. Uh, they had a live stream last night, and he has left General RV. That's the place he's been working and reviewing. RVs for them basically. He's formed a whole new business we're told and he's offering consulting services to anyone looking to buy an RV and will also now be reviewing all brands of RVs not just those sold by General. Anyway, uh, you know, so uh, we got a couple of comments on on Matt. Some people think uh, he's, his business plans are a little late. He should have done this a year ago before the big surge in RV sales because of the pandemic. But I kind of think personally that things are going to continue hot for another year because, uh, you know, even with the pandemic ebbing, it's still not done. And I think we're going to still see some uh, surges in RV sales upcoming. That's my guess, but I probably am wrong. Anyway, uh, he recently got his silver play button. He's now got how many subs? Uh, 145K. So uh, they take a while to get your silver play button out for 100,000, but they're good for that. Good for Matt. Anyway, good channel here. Check it out. We watch him occasionally. I have subbed to him, but he is now huge announcement. He's on his own, and they're now 100% independent. So uh, we're going to be, uh, if you're looking, if you're in the market for an RV or just want to learn about what the hell's going on, great, great channel, Matt's RV Review. Full disclosure for Butterfly Gypsy, this is a flashback, I guess for a couple of months ago, this is April, but she's just getting up to posting it now. Got rid of Big Bertha, she, they, apparently she told them about all the issues, you know, it's not a perfect vehicle, but she did a lot of work fixing it all up. So it's got some new owners, and now it's on to a new home for BG. There Big Bertha goes. By the way, if you love wind noise, you're going to love this video. Oh, yes. <laughs> and you can tell by the big smile, she's real happy with her new rig right there. Pop. So anyway, a new, one, a new vehicle there for a Butterfly Gypsy. She's getting to know her, yeah, so it's all uh, decked out there with all those lights. That's cool. I love all those lights. It's really cool at the Dome Rock campsite down in Quartzsite. This was, again, back in April. You wouldn't want to be there right now. It'd probably be uh, about 185 degrees, right? A lot of cool music here. Great music in this one, too, by the way. And uh, all the organizing and the fixing up and everything else for the new, uh, the new RV there. And she got her boot cast off, finally. She, the bootcast was on, I think she said, for four months. What did she kick a tire or something way back when? 
And uh, anyway, so I don't know, man. Anyway, so uh, latest update from BG Butterfly Gypsy. Just finishing up with uh, Pet Palooza for the summer of 2021. This is Bill Dog's Sammy, although we just get to see the back of Sammy's head there watching one of my live streams, huh? I don't know, man. I don't know. And this is Danny from Quebec. Quebec. And his dog, Nicky Poo. All right, so we're pretty much done with Pet Palooza for 2021. Thanks to everybody who submitted their pet pictures. And uh, we'll be having a Pet Palooza uh, review of all the Pet Palooza pictures uh, in just a few days. Uh, Crotchy, hosted by, yes, Crotchy, right? Yeah, Dave. All right, so we got a lot of pictures. We're going to have fun with that, so stay tuned for that. All right. All right, let's do some letters. Uh, Gail says that Prepper Wayne is visiting NF at the base camp. Okay, okay, whatever that means. <laughs> I, think he's, I think he's supposed to be doing some uh, solar panels for the, uh, the new uh, van, right? I don't know, man. I don't know. Thanks for the camo army tip there. We can sure, we can sure use it. I'm Not Chuck says Casey Roman is eyeing a Class B RV to use as a mobile office. The one she likes is $170,000. And Chuck, or Charles actually, says it makes no economic sense. Remember, everybody's asking, talking about money today. Paul Dixon says, I heard Nate, Element Van Life, paid $30,000 for his uh, JDM Toyota camper. That's the Japanese domestic market. That sounds crazy. That thing is 25 years old, but hey, he wanted it, right? <laughs> no Name says you could buy a house in Japan for 30K. Well, yeah, it's probably like a six foot, six by nine, the whole place. I don't know, man. I don't know. Christina says she wants to know where Morgan's been the last few days. We haven't seen any video from Morgan since uh, a couple days ago. It's last time we heard she was somewhere in the Memphis, Tennessee area. Uh, By Pinkerton says Casey Roman is a real estate broker with her own real estate agency. She's probably tired of paying rent for an office. I think it sounds like a good idea for maybe her to go out on her own and at least get. Oh, she said she made she conti she's continuing her deal with whatever office she's renting from right now or how or whatever deal she's doing. Right. As long as she keeps important papers somewhere else. Anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, th that's a good idea of buying the new van to use as a tax deferral thingy, dingy, deduction, dingy, whatever. Uh, yeah. and, and, and also, do not, uh, uh, buy says, do not do what um, a Seven did and keep your pink slip in the vehicle. Don't do that. A couple of people were asking whatever happened to Angela M. We have not heard much from her lately. Janice Lala says, Angela, yeah, it's been some time that uh, Angela's been posting anything, and she was traveling with a companion named John. Not the same John that Oz is traveling with. It's a different, there's a lot of people named Johns. Uh, F&T says, prayers to Carolyn and her family. More prayers to Bob Wells and his family. Prayers to all the nomads that are often treated like third-class citizens because they choose to have a home on wheels and not one we think that, not, not a home like that is considered normal, I guess, yeah. Anyway, God bless all the nomads, says F&T. Uh, I was talking about Never Say Never. You know, that was a James Bond movie. Light Quest says, did you know that the James Bond movie was called Never Say Never? Yeah, Never Say Never Again or something like that. Yeah, Sean Connery said that after uh, the movie, uh, yeah, yeah, he said he would never do another Bond movie again, and then he came back to do another Bond movie. So never, he would never do another Bond movie again. But that's a weird movie because they, they, it was an unofficial Bond movie, and I believe they never used the term James Bond in the movie. They call, I think, whatever, they, because they couldn't. It was, it was like, it, it, you know. There's certain words they were not allowed to say because they were officially licensed by the official James Bond movie organization, and uh, you know they, I, you know, whatever. There's, you know, I, th I don't know if they even call them double. I don't know double O seven. I forget the movie. It's a kooky movie. It's not one of the best James Bond. Although the Sean Connerys, in my opinion, are the best. But that one was kind of a throwaway movie. But 
Yeah, they, I don't think they call him James Bond in it or something, or double O's. I don't know. I forget exactly, but yeah. Yeah, I was just looking it up on Wikipedia here. Many of the elements of the Eon-produced Bond, Bond films, which were the official Bond films, were not present in Never Say Never Again for legal reasons. That includes the gun barrel sequence at the beginning, where the uh, full symbol of the 007 appears. And similarly, there is no James Bond theme to use, although no effort was made to supply another tune. A pre-credit sequence was filmed, but not used. Instead, the film opens with the credits run over the top of the oak and me. So anyway, it is not an official Bond movie, but it, it is interesting. <laughs> I, we gotta do a film review channel, damn it, Crotchy. What do you think? Yeah, I... All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching Letters and More for the 4th, the 4th of August, 2021. Thanks for watching. You have a good one. Vlog on.